is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logos that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis. I'm going to check out the video. What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to y'all with a quick video. We're going to talk about what to expect from the Toronto Raptors, a team that just came off an NBA championship. Having one of the top five players in Kawhi Leonard, one of the best defensive players in Kawhi Leonard, and now he is no longer here to defend the championship with his teammates and his organization. They have to go in a different direction. They had to go younger. They have to find a new wing, and they in a whole nother direction this year. I think Toronto is one of the most mysterious teams in the NBA this season, mainly because we don't know what they're going to be. We don't know what they're going to do. And we don't know how they're going to play without Kawhi Leonard. And remember, the NBA is tougher. So um, let's talk about what happens with the Toronto Raptors this season. This is a team that won 58 games last year. Their biggest free agency pickups was Stanley Johnson and guys like... Um, Cameron Payne. They also picked up um, Rondé Hollis Jefferson. So they got a couple wings back. Rondé is a guy that can finish around a rim. Um, not really known as a floor spacer. Stanley Johnson is a guy that was supposed to be an all-around small forward, but he can't score consistently and he's, he can't knock down three spot up or contest it and he can't create his own shot efficiently which was the biggest demise of his career, not really able to make an offensive impact, but he has always been a solid defender, but we thought he would be more of a elite defender by now, but he still is 23 years old. I think they took a gamble on him. He shows a lot of potential. He has the body. He's a legitimate 6'7", 245, and he's mobile and athletic, so I understand why they took that chance. I was a person that liked it and believed in Stanley Johnson because he went out there and played hard. He went out there and competed, but he also showed confidence that even if his shot wasn't falling, he still took more shots and he felt like he still can make the shots that he was taking. It's just a matter of them falling in, and that's just been a Achilles' heel of his career is not being able to knock down shots. And I think that that's something that he has to continue to work on. Another thing is they got OG. He will be coming back this year. I think he's going to be a starter. He is the best wing to me on his team because of fit. He's a guy that can knock down threes. He can defend and guard multiple positions. He's athletic. He's mobile. But he's also a team player. He's a guy that doesn't need the ball to be effective. He just picks his spots and, and he stays in the right areas. And he's always ready when the team needs him. And he can knock down shots consistently. Mark Gasol was one of the biggest pickups. A lot of people loved and hated the trade. Some people felt like Mark Gasol wasn't an upgrade over Jonas. I personally felt that he was a better fit because of his three-point shooting. I thought he was a better fit because of his defense. And even though he's not a great rebounder like Jonas, he can space out the floor and um, set great screens and dribble handoffs. But he's also just a smart winning player. Um, he was one of the best players in the Western Conference. That's why he made the all-star team. And even though he was older, he do all the small little things that can help you win games and close out games. And he knows when to be, where to be at on the floor. Uh, he proved that against the Bucks and against Golden State and Philly locking up and slowing down and B taking out Nikola Vucevic out the series, which was very important because that was a best player. And he also helped slow down Giannis getting steals, um, helping with the wall and making it tough. And that's the team that they had to beat because it was a 60 win team and the best in the NBA. And Mark Gasol was a big reason why they was able to take down all three of those teams. And he did very well against the Warriors. So I will say he's an important pickup. And he ended up showing his value mainly in the playoffs. 
Serge Ibaka has been declining, but he's a good um, player on his team because his defense has still been solid. His offense comes and goes. Um, that's why a lot of people criticize him because $23 million is a lot of money um, to spend on a player that's not a consistent player for you on both, both ends of the court. But I think they're going to need him to do a lot more on his team because they have no Kawhi Leonard, no DeMar DeRozan. The scoring has to go to somebody. And I think that Pascal Siakam is going to be the guy that a lot of people feel is going to have to take that role of taking more shots. And also, I think you got to watch out for Kyle Lowry. This is probably going to be one of his last two good to great seasons. He's a guy that can knock down jumpers. He showed his ability to set up his teammates and facilitate and keep everybody involved while still being able to knock down spot up shots and he still has the ability to get to his spots and create his own shot from time to time and i think that that's very important then you look at pascal a guy that can rebound he can get up and down the floor he can be a solid defender he can be a floor spacer at that power forward to center position um, he showed that he improved every year. I think he's ready for the challenge of being an all-star. He was a borderline all-star last year, but he didn't make it even on my list. But he was awfully close, especially in the Eastern Conference, not really known for forwards. And I think that he can take one of those spots. And remember, Kawhi Leonard is no longer in the East, so Pascal will be one of the ideal players if he can be healthy to take one of those four spots in the Eastern Conference. And I think he can get up to the 20, 22 point range, which would be a mass improvement, but is also not a franchise player. And I think that Pascal might be a two or a three when it comes to being the best player on the team, but he actually was the two or the three when they won a championship with Kawhi Leonard. But now he's going to be asked to do more. And I think he's ready for the challenge. We just got to see what happens with that Fred Van Fleet was amazing in the later stages being able to knock down threes get to his spots and get to the paint but also play off the ball and allow them to go small especially in the backcourt with him and Lowry making them a speedy team that can get up and down the floor but also have the, the floor space and ability to knock down shots and create their own shots um and then you know at the end of the day you just got a bunch of solid role players that can play multiple positions and a lot of these guys are not really known but they still have um, a chance to make an impact on this team because somebody's gonna have to pick up minutes and somebody's gonna have to make up some shots off that bench and I think Norman Powell can be a guy that can do that and I think this is a year for him to really break out and show that he can be one of their more consistent players um, so that's gonna be important but what I will say on this team is this team is going to be a playoff team. I do have Toronto easily making it to the playoffs. They're not going to be a 58-win team, but I can still see them winning around a 45-52-win to 52 win season. I know that might sound crazy to you, but this team is well coached. They have a lot of the same players coming back this year, so they're not going to lose that much chemistry. They played very well without Kawhi Leonard last year. They still have all the pieces that they need to be a great offensive team. They'll have all the pieces that they need to be a decent defensive team. And I think that those things aren't going to change this year. Only problem is some of their players have gotten older, but Marcus Hall still looking pretty good in the FIBA. I think Kyle Lowry having a break and time to heal his body and time to really just continue to grow with his teammates can really make him have a decent season as he hasn't really done anything since the playoffs. And I still think that Pascal will be able to take his game to the next level and take a lot of those points that Kawhi Leonard had um, and use those, that, that chance to, to prove that he is an all-star player. And I still think OG is one of my favorite players on this team. Him not really playing at all in the playoffs and him not really playing at all at the end of the season. I think that that's another X factor on this team that can come in and give them some versatility while also giving them a, a, a consistent shooter in those corners that they're going to need him to do. But OG can do just a little bit more 
And I think that he's going to be able to show that this year because they're going to need him to do more. And since they didn't really use him last year, he's going to be one of the guys that can be a sneaky player because we don't really know how good he is. We don't really know what he's working on. And he wasn't really needed last year, but he's going to be very much needed this year because Stanley and Howard, Howard Jefferson can't shoot the ball right now or space out the floor, and OG can do that. So I think Nick Nurse is an excellent coach, just like majority of the people would tell you. I think that this still is a functional, good team. They have the right role players. They have the all-star caliber players. They have everything you need offensively and defensively to be comp to be competitive against anybody. And I think that this team is going to be a dark horse team in the East. I'm not saying that they're going to win a championship. I ain't saying that they're going to go to the finals. But I can definitely see them being a uh, top three to four to five seed in the East. And I can definitely see them getting also out of the first round. I think this season just depends a lot more on how their role players and their how they role players play and how, they're, how they function together as a team, but also development of Pascal, the development of a guy like OG, and seeing how well and how much left in the tank the guys like Kyle Lowry and Marcus Gasol have left, and seeing if Serge Ibaka can be more of an impact player offensively this year will be also very important because those points have to go somewhere. But other than that, they love playing with each other. They already have experience. They already have the veterans. They have young, promising players that want to prove something this year. And I think that that all makes them a threat in the East. So let me know what you guys think about the Toronto Raptors. Are they over it? they underrated? Will they make the playoffs? Will they be a sleeper? Will they be a dark horse contender? Can you see them going to the Eastern Conference Finals? Do you think that Nick Nurse is going to be able to coach his team back to the Eastern Conference Finals? Or do you think they just don't have enough? Do you think they're going to make a trade? Do you think Marcus Hall and Kyle Lowry will be on this team by the trade deadline? Or do you think that this team is what it is? They, they like what they have. And they should try to try to look in the playoffs with a roster that was very similar, was super starless, and they still can be competitive. So I like them. I like the team. I got respect for this team. They got a lot of players that even if they suffer injuries, that they have solid players at those position, positions that can come in for two to three weeks and still make them competitive and they ain't going to have too much of a drop-off. So I think it was important to have wean that depth having um, point guard depth and having some bigs that can play multiple positions and multiple bigs that can impact the game and i think that that helped them longevity wise too because like i said if they suffer an injury it's not the end of the world because they have a lot of depth at each position and players that are respectable and trustworthy and know their roles or will know their role so i don't think that'll hurt them either so that's another good thing for the raptors this team is very well put together they just missing that guy that can take them back to the next level. And we'll see if they trade for that guy or if Siakam or OG can develop to all-stars so that way they can cancel that spot out by having two quality players. But we won't know until they play and how they will be until they play. So let me know what you guys think. Like this video, check out my older videos on my channel. I have many playlists. I break down rookies. I break down players. I break down summer league players. I do cover the draft, and I got a mock draft up already. Not only that, I do podcasts, and I also talk about the game of basketball, whether it comes to summer league, free agency, trade deadline, buyouts, and also I cover top 10 discussions and stuff like that. So you like this type of video, you like the NBA, check out my older videos and my playlists. I enjoy making these videos. You guys enjoy watching. I'm good.